Good morning, everyone. Today we are going to present a case of intranasal herpes simplex virus infection associated with mucormycosis in a COVID-19 patient. This is the first case report as far as we know. The clinical associate in this report is Dr. D.P.S. Tyagi, Director of Harsh Polyclinic and ENT Hospital, Kazibad. Dr. Tyagi provided this case to us for study. This case of intranasal HSV infection with mucormycosis in COVID-19 patient is being presented for its rarity and this is the first case in the English literature to the best of our knowledge. This patient also had co-infection with candida organisms. Our purpose is to spread awareness about unlikely and varied infections in COVID-19 patients who are immunocompromised for various reasons. History of the patient. 35 year old male with history of diabetes while recovering from COVID infection presented with nasal obstruction and loss of sensation on the left side of the face and symptoms of meningism including neck rigidity. On nasal diagnostic endoscopy, typical appearance of black necrosis of mucosa was present in addition to areas where nasal mucosa was pink and friable. Here we have the patient he did not have any swelling of the cheek or redness of the eyes. Only symptom was stiffness of the nose, left nose and paresthesia of the left side of the face. But there was no external sign and symptom of obstruction. And if we see the endoscopic picture of this patient, we see the necrotic black areas and pink areas. So the black areas represented mucormycosis infection while the pink areas represented herpes simple, virus simplex infection as we will be discussing soon. Debridement of black necrotic mucosa was done and diagnosis of invasive mucormycosis with candidiasis was given on histopathological examination. After few days, repeat surgical cleaning was done. Two separate biopsies were taken from the ulcerated and necrotic pink mucosa on which diagnosis of herpes simplex virus infection was given and the other tissue was from the black area on which the diagnosis of invasive mucormycosis was submitted. Repeat debridement was carried out again five days later and the tissue was submitted for histopathological examination in which persisting changes of HSV infection and mucormycosis were reported. Histopathological findings of the case are discussed now. Here we have biopsy from the black necrotic area of the mucosa and if we see that this nasal mucosa is markedly congested, shows presence of dilated blood vessels and pieces of cartilage. The areas marked here are the necrotic areas of the tissue. And if we see these areas, we find that the tissue is infiltrated by fungal hyphae. If we see closely at higher magnification, we will find that these hyphae are broad
ribbon like high line with folded walls and at places they may show branching i will try to find out the area of branching look at the thickness of the wall of the mucor it can be very very thick and this is typical and uh, this in which generally the necrotic tissue the viable tissue is not invaded by the fungus most of the times the reason of necrosis i will be explaining you when i will show the ngo invasion by the fungus so we have here numerous hyphae of mucor mycosis infiltrating the tissue and this is what i was saying that branching branching may be at right angle or it may be at obtuse angle so broad non septate ribbon like hyaline non septate hyphae with right angle or obtuse angle branching folded walls marked variation in the size mark thickness are the characteristic features of mucor mycosis in the same specimen while examining closely we found another area where another fungus was present so if we see this area closely we find that there are spores or yeast like fungus lying in this necrotic exudate can you appreciate this these are the spores of candida fungus some more spores we can see here colonies of candida fungus entangled in the inflammatory exudate so this patient had presence of mixed infection fungal infection and that was mucor mycosis and candida albicans for confirmation of the fungus we carried out pass stain and on pass we will see that the hyphae in the necrotic tissue of mucor mycosis have taken up magenta color they are shining brightly and we can localize them much more easily here are multiple hyphae of mucor mycosis which are broad ribbon like aseptate and similarly we were able to localize the candida albicans yeast like organisms much more easily on pass stain as we will see here on enlargement of the image we see the bunches of yeast like candida they have taken reddish magenta color and they can be localized much more easily we can see budding here so this patient had mixed infection with mucor mycosis and 
Candida albicans. So, after four or five days of treatment with amphotericin B, another surgery was done for the debriment of the tissue. And in this biopsy, we received two pieces of tissue separate in two separate bottles. One tissue was from the pinkish area of the mucosa, which was necrotic. And in this tissue, what we found was inflammatory exudate and strips of squamous epithelium. Now, if we look at the strips of squamous epithelium, we find that there is ulceration, there is integrity of the epithelium is lost, it is ulcerated and the cells are lying in the fibrinous exudate. There is acantholysis of the cells because they are lying separately and if we go at high power to see the nuclear features, we find that these cells are showing various changes like intranuclear inclusions, nuclear enlargement, margination of the nuclei, ground glass appearance of the nuclei, if you go from one field to another field, we find that there is multinucleation, prominent intranuclear inclusions, Again, very clear margination, ground glass nucleoplasm. We see the other bit. If we see here, we find by nucleation very clear ground glass appearance of the nu nucleoplasm. The margination is very, very clear. So these changes are pathognomic of herpes simplex virus infection. Both herpes simplex type 1 and type 2 produce the similar type of cytopathic changes. Based on these nuclear features, diagnosis of herpes simplex virus infection was given on this particular biopsy, which was taken from the pink area of the necrotic nasal mucosa. To elaborate further on the changes we are finding by nucleation here. We also saw nuclear molding in this case. I will try to demonstrate that if I can find that cell. Here we have a multinucleated cell with nuclear molding. So this young patient had very severe infection with of invasive mucormycosis, which was a multiple infection or co-infection of mucormycosis with candida albicans. And on top of that, he developed herpes simplex infection. Here we see very prominent intranuclear inclusion. So let us revise the changes which we see in HSV infection. These include ulceration, vesiculation, acantholysis, nuclear enlargement, nuclear hyperchromasia, 
margination of nuclear chromatin, ground glass appearance of the nuclei, binucleation, multinucleation, molding of the nuclei, and intracytoplasmic inclusions. Now, second biopsy from this case was received from the black necrotic mucosa, and that shows extensive necrosis of the mucosa. And here we see that it is heavily infiltrated by hyphae of mucormycosis, which we have seen in the previous biopsy also. But here we see that these hyphae are irregular in shape or ribbon shaped, thick, thick, broad. They have new folding of the cytoplasmic walls. So very, very distinct infiltration by mucor hyphae in the necrotic areas of the tissue. Another area showing infiltration by hyphae. And here is the invasion of the vascular wall. And invasion by the mucor, which is the characteristic feature of mucormycosis. Here we see a vessel wall. And the wall in the lumen is infiltrated by hyphae of mucormycosis. So angio invasion leads to ischemia of the tissue which causes ischemic necrosis of the tissue and that is infiltrated by the hyphae of the mucormycosis. This tissue also was stained with pass stain to demonstrate the hyphae or confirmation of the fungus and we see this is the pass stain and the hyphae are shining brightly. They are magenta in color. We can see many, many more number of hyphae in PAS stain than in HNE because the stain picks up hyphae easily. And here is the blood vessel wall, which I showed in the HME stain. And here we can see that this vessel wall is infiltrated by mucus heavily, human as well as the wall. So this was the histopathology of this case of young man who presented with mucormycosis associated with candida infection and herpes simplex virus infection. So, having established the diagnosis of herpes simplex virus infection with mucormycosis and candida infection, let us know about the various ways of diagnosing HSV infection in a patient. The methods of diagnosis of herpes simplex virus infection are histopathological examination. This is the gold standard. And what we see in this are characteristic epidermal or epithelial changes, which include acantholysis, ballooning degeneration, necrosis, formation of multi-loculated vesicles or ulcers, nuclear enlargement, intranuclear inclusions, nuclear margination, ground glass nuclei, binucleation, multinucleation, nuclear molding, and lymphocytic infiltration in the dermis or some mucosa. All these changes we have seen in the slide which was demonstrated from this case. The second investigation is serology for IgM and IgG antibodies for HSV1 
and two, the IgM antibodies are for recent infections, and IgG antibodies are for old or recurrent infections. Or we can do immunohistochemistry on the tissue for HSV1 and 2 monoclonal antibodies. And the last is polymerase chain reaction for herpes simplex virus infection for confirmation of the diagnosis. After the diagnosis of herpes simplex virus infection, serology for IgM antibodies to HSV1 virus was carried out and antibodies was found to be positive in low titers. Why low titers? Possibly due to immunosuppressed state of the patient in which the humoral immunity also get depressed. Now, let us know the ways of lab diagnosis of mucormycosis. KOH preparation. The KOH test or KOH preparation for fungus using 20% solution of potassium hydroxide and examined directly under the microscope is a quick, inexpensive, non-invasive, accurate fungal test, but it does not specify type of fungus. Histopathology is the gold standard for diagnosis. As discussed during the demonstration of the slide, mucor hyphae are non-septate, broad, highline, ribbon-like, irregular fungal hyphae with wide angle branching accompanied by tissue necrosis and angio invasion by the fungi. Special stains used for confirmation of fungus are gomeries, silver methamine stain and per iodic acid if stain. Third is fungal culture on sabrots, dextrose, agar medium incubated at 25 to 30 degrees centigrade and this helps in identification of the type and subtype of the fungus. However, it is an insensitive test. In particular, cultures are often negative even though direct microscopy is positive. Next, we can do biochemical tests like galactomannan or GM test and 1,3-VD glucan positivity in the serum which indicates presence of aspergillosis and other fungal infections. But this test is never positive in mucormycosis. So this test can be used as a negative marker for diagnosis of mucor. The other tests, serological tests like ELISA, immunoblot and immunodiffusion show poor sensitivity and sensitivity and specificity and, and they also show cross-reactivity with candida and aspergillus species. So they are not very helpful. Then polymerase chain reaction is a molecular test which is very sensitive and specific but it is not easily available. To the best of our knowledge, our case of intranasal HSV infection associated with invasive mucormycosis is the first case in the English literature. The patient also had co-infection with Candida yeast. Intranasal HSV infection clinically mistaken for mucormycosis was reported by Adam Kaplan et al in 2019 in a patient of chronic lymphatic leukemia and biopsy showed positivity for 
HSV1 and 2 on immunohistochemistry. No fungal or yeast elements were detected. So in this report, there was no mucormycosis. On the other hand, in 2019 only, Chia Yu Chiu et al. also reported intranasal herpes simplex virus infection in HIV positive female patient. Again, this patient did not have mucormycosis infection. Then another report by Dryden SC in 2019. They reported necrotizing nasal and sinus herpes infection with orbital involvement mimicking mucormycosis. In a 94-year-old male with a past medical history of hypertension, congestive heart failure, and chronic kidney disease. Again, in this report, there is no associated mycormycosis infection. In the same year, Patel Nahel et al. published a pediatric case series of herpes virus infection of the nose masquerading as invasive fungal sinusitis. It was in 2015 when Brazil reported positivity of HSP virus infection in nose in a case of polypoidal rhinosinusitis in an immunocompetent patient. So we can see that till now there is no reported case of HSV infection with mycormycosis. Now let's talk a little bit about the pathogenesis of herpes virus simplex infection. The transmission of herpes simplex virus infection is dependent upon intimate personal contact of a susceptible seronegative individual with someone excreting virus particles. Virus must come in contact with the mucosal surfaces or abraded skin for infection to be initiated. With viral replication at the site of primary infection, either an intact virion or more simply, the capsid is transported retrograde by neurons to the dorsal root ganglia where another round of viral application takes place and latency is established. Replication sometimes leads to disease and infrequently results in life-threatening infection. The more severe the primary infection, as reflected by the size, number, and extent of the lesion, the more likely it is that recurrences will ensue. Now, what is the effect of immunosuppression on HSV infection? Well, on one hand, it is believed that immunosuppression increases vulnerability to recurrent infections by human virus infection. On the other hand, HSV virus infection causes immunosuppression by direct and indirect means and makes the person more susceptible to more severe infections. Persistence of viral infection and to secondary infections by the environmental agent. So, on, on one hand, immunosuppression leads to increased incidence of H HSV infection. On the other hand, HSV infection itself causes immunosuppression in the individual. The indirect mechanism of immunosuppression by the virus include interferon production and stimulation of T suppressor cells in animal models. In direct mechanism, there is direct inactivation of immunologically active lymphocytes in humans. However, in COVID-19 patients, it appears that immunosuppression due to the disease may cause reactivation and replication of the virus leading to disease 
which is generally diagnosed on biopsy as intranasal HSV infection and it is not usually suspected clinically as also in the present case. Intranasal HSV infection is difficult to diagnose clinically. Now, what is the pathogenesis, pathogenesis of mucormycosis in COVID-19 patients? Severe COVID-19 disease is associated with increase in pro-inflammatory markers such as IL-1, IL-6 and tumor necrosis alpha, less CD4 interferon gamma expression and fewer CD4 and CD8 cells. This increases the susceptibility of the individual to bacterial and fungal infections. Mucormycosis is an opportunistic fungal infection that belongs to the zygomycetes family which are ubiquitous in the environment. The major route of infection is via inhalation of spores. Mucormycosis is non-pathogenic in immunocompetent individuals as a result of presence of intact innate immunity via neutrophils which permit the elimination of these spores. However, in immunocompromised patients with severe COVID-19 infection, patients with uncontrolled diabetes mellitus, patients with diabetic ketoacidosis or with HIV infection or AIDS or patients of cancer or organ transplant patients, in these patients, mucormycosis can result in severe invasive fungal infection. Then a word about the co-infection of mucormycosis with other fungal infections. Our patient had intranasal herpes virus infection with mucormycosis and co-infection with candida fungus. Yang et al. found that 3 out of 52 patients, that is 5.8% patients, had fungal co-infection in 52 critically ill patients, including Aspergillus flavus, Aspergillus fumigatus, and Candida albicans. Other China studies have found a higher percentage of secondary infection ranging from 8 to 15 percent in COVID-19 patients, but it is not clear whether it is bacterial or fungal co-infection. None of these studies mention about co-infection of mucormycosis with other fungi. However, in our 50 patients of nasal mucormycosis, we found two cases of Candida albicans and four cases of Aspergillus infection leading to 12% incidence of fungal co-infections. So what is the take-home message from this presentation? And that is that COVID-19 patients are presenting with various complications of which invasive mucormycosis is the most devastating. As it causes high morbidity and mortality and is very difficult to treat. Mucormycosis may be associated with other fungal infections like aspergillosis and candidiasis. Our present case had co-infection with candida yeast. If it is associated with other necrotizing infections, like herpes virus infection as in our present case, condition may not improve un unless diagnosed, as treatment of both infections is entirely different. Since the management of invasive fungal sinusitis differs greatly from the management of herpes simplex virus infection, correct pathological diagnosis and identification of fungal elements is very important and that reiterates the importance of pathologists 
in patient care. And at the end, I would like to say that the high index of suspicion by a pathologist during diagnosis leads to success in detection of the unusual findings. Thank you very much.